So what about those provisions in the tax code that could allow a businessman who lost a lot of money one year to avoid income taxes for years into the future? And what about the legality of the New York Times obtaining and publishing information for Mr. Trump's 1995 tax returns? To address both questions, I'm joined by my old friend, Professor Jonathan Turley of George Washington University Law School. Welcome. Nice Thanks, Britt. Nice to see you, Jonathan. So the clear implication, it seemed, of the Times report on Mr. Trump's 1995 tax return was that he had, that he had improperly uh, gotten out of paying taxes. What about that? No, it's, it's, from what I can see, it's not illegal. You know, in, in this area, particularly real estate, debt is managed as, as much as profits. That is, you can make as much money, believe it or not, with debt as you can often in moving profits. And, How so? Well, there's a thing called a net operating loss, where you can actually claim losses to investments, even losses experienced by the bank, not you personally, and use that to, to protect you against taxation. Companies do this all the time. Major companies often don't pay much taxes. It's a long-standing criticism. About income taxes. Right. right. It's a long-standing criticism. Uh, and there are very good arguments to make that we should close these types of loopholes, but these are very very common. And for people in D.C. to do this Claude Rains act of I'm shocked, shocked that someone's not paying their taxes really doesn't play very well. Well, if it, if, of course, if it's legal, it's not their taxes. It's right. They're being asked to, okay. they don't, they're not obligated to pay this. But what about the question of whether these are, I mean, why would Congress, if, if, if this is a way of skipping taxes improperly, in the eyes of a lot of people. Why would Congress have put these provisions in the code? I think the purpose is they would rather lose that taxpayer than lose the business. That is, they, they're giving people an ability to come back. I mean, all the bankruptcy laws and all the tax laws are designed, at least on, on the surface, to try to keep people in the game, to keep them and work them back into profitability because they employ people, they produce things necessary for the country. So you have these laws that allow people to, you know, count debt against their taxes, and companies use it, individuals use it widely. And, and so this is not a shocking event. You can, or you can certainly argue that this isn't a good thing, but it's, it's not necessarily an illegal thing. Well, it's also, it's also the case, apparently, that, that this is what the tax laws written by Congress encourage people to do because right. they believe it's the, the conduct that results is valuable. That's right. I mean, people like Trump are margin players. You know, mo many people in the market are margin players. They look at that, that margin of profit and costs, and they play with it in a way that maximizes their wealth. Right. And you play that margin with everything. You play with profit, you play with debt, and you use as much of the law as you can to do that. Now, the public has a right to say there's some things we don't want you to do anymore, right. and this may be one of them. But the law does allow you to manage debt this way. So the argument is made about the New York Times that it um, illegally published this tax return information. What about that? Well, there are federal laws and state laws that say that you cannot publish a tax return without authority or permission, and you can from also, the taxpayer. That's right, and you also cannot publish tax or sorry, return information that's referred to. So technically, there could be a criminal case made, but this is not a good case for that. This is Why? The, well because the New York Times didn't break into someone's office and steal this information. A source came to them. And with all the broken China we have in this election, we don't need to take after the First Amendment and add it to this national fit of passion. The argument is made that because Dean Baquet, the editor of the New York Times, at a seminar or a public event sometime a few weeks back, said that he would go to jail to publish those tax right. returns, that that, in effect, puts him, makes him complicit in their release to him, although albeit anonymously. What do you think of that argument? Well, I'm sure the New York Times reporters were crawling in fetal positions in the back of the room when he said that. Um, <laughs> Why? Because technically you can't face a criminal charge for something like this. But what protects you is press freedom. But that's not always clear. There's always a risk in these types of cases. The fact is that this is a journalist doing what journalists do. They have a whistleblower or some type of source that gives them embarrassing information about someone.
someone or, so, or part of the government. That was the Pentagon Papers. And all of the major scandals we have often came from disclosures from people who are not supposed to disclose them. So there could be a case against the disclosure, but not the disclosee. Is that essentially what you're saying? That's basically right. That is, journalists are afforded a great deal of latitude, and it's a good thing. And, and we have to, at some point, have some rules in this game. And going after media for publishing stuff from sources of this kind, in my view, is a bridge too far. Jonathan, good to see you. Thanks, Thank Rick. you for doing this. Thanks.